Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of our guide video for all the Age of Empires 4 civilizations. Today we're going to be taking on the Chinese and I'm going to show you guys how to play the Chinese with one of the more popular openings in high level, but it's also very easy to replicate as I'm going to explain to you in this video. The strategy I'm going to showcase is going to be the Song Dynasty 2TC Boom and it's going to rely on our defensive abilities because Chinese are a bit of a slow sift to start, but they pick up as the game goes on. With the Fire Lances in late game as a great, as a crazy good option, as well as the really strong bomb words that can close out games. But the Chinese definitely start off on a little bit of a slower pace, uh, but that's okay. We're gonna use walls, defensive towers, defensive units like horsemen, archers, and spears to kind of just survive, depending on what our opponents throw at us. And I'm gonna explain that once we get to the feudal age, and really just develop slowly into a nice little mid game. So if that's your style, let's throw the Chinese and let's hop into this one. It's gonna be a land map tutorial, of course. And before I get started, I have to tell you guys that we're gonna start with an Imperial officer first with the Chinese, and then we're gonna make villagers after that. And we're also gonna use all our villagers to go onto the mill right away. So we're not gonna take sheep under the town center, we're gonna go to our mill so we can inspire that with our Imperial officer as a really, really nice build. Let's hop into it. All right, so we're gonna immediately go to the berries. I make one villager, then Imperial Officer, that's totally fine. The first villager will go ahead and make a house, and then the Imperial Officer will go to the, will go to the mill. And then with the scout, we're just, we're just gonna go ahead and scout the map. All right, I'm gonna take that sheep close by, and I'm gonna send all the sheep there. Builder comes out, we'll make a house, then he's gonna go straight to the next resource, which I think should be gold, actually. And then the Imperial Officer will go straight to the mill. Okay. The Imperial Officer will come out now, and he's gonna go straight to that mill, and he's gonna start to inspire it. Not collect the tax just yet. There we go, we're gonna inspire the mill. And then with our scout, we're just gonna go ahead and pick up the um, sheep around the map. We actually have to go to wood though. We actually have to go to wood first. Not the gold, because we actually need the, the, the wood to be able to make that mining camp afterwards, because we, we open with the mill. That's actually my bad, but nothing really happened. We should be fine. Small mistake there. And we're gonna go straight to the wood first. And yeah, this is the setup. So you have six wheels on your mill and the Imperial Officer will be um, inspiring that mill so that they drop off, I think 12? Every time they go away and have 10, they drop off 12. Yeah, 36 there, so 12 uh, per villager, which is really good. Send all your sheep there straight to the mill and we're gonna try and protect that at all costs. So Bill's going straight to the wood line now. We're gonna have three on wood, and then we're gonna go straight to the gold afterwards. Okay. And being told by my Twitch chat as we're doing it live that it's actually supervising and not inspiring. I think that's the prelate version. Okay, so supervising the mining camp. Oh, sorry, the, the mill, rather. Now we're gonna go for a mining camp here. Yeah, we should be able to afford it, nice. And then with your scouts, just look for more sheep. Simple as that. Um, with Chinese, the more sheep you get, the better, because you obviously have a mill, and if you supervise near the mill and you have sheep there, you actually get a really nice boost. So the more sheep you have, the better for uh, the early and mid game. Alright, so once you have a decent amount of inspiring going on, or whatever it's called, supervising, um, you want to actually collect some tax. So you want to wait till you have a good amount of, um, of gold saved up there, of tax. I'm gonna take a little bit of tax just to help us get to the next age. And we're just gonna do three on gold, that's it. The rest will be purely based on, and once you collect tax, you go back to inspire the mill as well. All right, go back to wood. So next ones will go straight to wood as well. And only three on gold, and they will help build the Barbican of the Sun as well to defend ourselves. All right, and as usual, all the builders I showcase in this video will be in the Discord available for Twitch subscribers. I'll leave a link to my Twitch and my Discord in the YouTube video so you can pick that up. But I will have my editor put up some graphics at the end of the video just to help kind of recap what we talked about. All right, go straight to wood, continue sending to the wood. We're gonna need a house now, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a house near my gold. It's important to use the gold villagers to build houses because we don't wanna float too much gold. And once we get, once you click the feudal age, we're gonna get a second officer out on the map. We should be good to go soon. Continue mining the sheep near the mill. Yeah, just make sure they're as close as possible there. It should be good. And with my scout, just look for more sheep, scout your opponent, all the usual stuff that you go for. 
keep in mind we're gonna need 200 gold to actually be able to afford the second um second landmark so we actually need 400 gold compared to the usual civilization that just makes the one landmark because we want to enter that song dynasty as fast as possible all right so as soon as you can actually afford it you want to make your barbican of the sun in a nice defensive area i want to defend my gold and my wood so something right here would be fantastic and I'm going to make it with two villagers, with using the two gold villagers that I have here. Perfect stuff. And then as soon as I can afford it, I want to make another officer. But to do that, I'm going to need a little bit more on food. So I'm going to send a few villas to food now. Let's make that like two more villagers to food. And then after that, when I can afford it, another officer will come out. And he's going to be on tax duty. But he'll probably also inspire the stone mine. Not inspire, supervise the stone mine we'll do in a second here. All right. It's very important to listen up here. At this point, we're going to... We can't just go f go ahead and go for a greedy song boom. It doesn't work. So at this point, we got to think what our opponent's going to throw at us. If our opponent is playing as the French, we're going to make a barracks at this point. If our opponent is playing as, to, you know, because we're expecting knights. If our opponent is playing as the English, we probably need some horsemen and some archers out on the, on the field as soon as possible. So we're going to go ahead and make some buildings in Feudal Age. We can't just go for a pure song boom because that leaves us very susceptible. We can also use some walls. So if there's any place that you can wall, it's a good time to do it now as you're you're kind of aging up to the next uh, to the next age. So let's go ahead and take one fill off here. Drop it off at the mill. And go ahead and wall this side, for example. There we go. And when the officer comes out, he should be good to go. And now we're going to actually take a few bills off our wood or uh, off any resources that you're floating. Go ahead and make a stone mine. And using our second officer, we're going to go ahead and supervise that one. These guys can go right back to gold to get the 200 that we need. And nice little trick with the walls is that you can cut off the two edges, stop the two edges, and you save 10 wood, and your wall is still completely fine. Uh, wolf needs to die though. There we go. Alright, he's going to supervise that stone mine, bring back the sheep. So at this point, let's go with a defensive range. Just, it's the most flexible building. Let's make a few archers to defend ourselves, just to showcase what it's like to actually play some defense. I'm going to send the bills now straight to the wood line. Because we're going to need some more wood to be able to make the archers and to make any tower that we might need as well. Now we've got the gold. We're going to go ahead and make another house here. And again, all, a lot of this is very subjective. Like the moves I'm doing here are not necessarily like the only ways to go about things. Um, I'm not going to make too many archers now. I want to afford the second TC first. But if you absolutely need to, you go ahead and make the archers. So again, do not greed too hard here. Do not greed too hard. It's not worth it. All right, so I'm gathering a lot of stone here, as you can see. And I could go for now the Imperial Academy with my gold villagers. So let me explain the Song Dynasty that, uh, real quick for those who might not know. The Song Dynasty lets you actually... Let me just make sure I have my 300 stone collected. There it is. And now I'm going to go ahead and make a second town center. Uh, let's, pick, let's pick this area. Berries, deer. Uh, berries and... Um, and wood, sorry, pretty good area. And we'll make some archers now as soon as we can afford them. And now this guy can just collect taxes while this guy continues to inspire the mill. Bring my sheep there as well and continue going like that. All right, so the Song Dynasty, basically what it lets you do is create villagers faster from your town centers. Uh, I forget exactly the speed. I believe it's 35% faster, something similar to that. Oh, they're taking the sheep a little bit far out there. Should not be part of the plan. And now we'll continue booming here. Gonna take the wood. We'll set up some farms or some deer here in a second. But it's important to get us some archers now to be, to be able to defend ourselves. Notice we invested some walls. We have the barbican of the sun, and we have archers now to defend. If you need a tower, feel free to go for it, no problem. And the upgrade that we need to get right now is a wheelbarrow. So keep the three bills on. Keep the three bills on the gold mine. I'm gonna be able to pick up wheelbarrow now. And of course, all this is real time. So if I'm missing a couple things, forgive me. Fantastic. So now we got two TCs and our villagers, as you can see, produce at 13 seconds. So we're going to get a ton of villagers advantage now. And we're still keeping the defense strong here. You have the option of making Jugunu in the Song Dynasty. So if that's what you need, you can go for it. I'll continue making a few archers for now just for some defense and just to just to make it seem like it's a more of a real game. Because you will absolutely need to make some defensive units in a real game. I want to go ahead and take the deer out here because natural resources are very good, of course. Uh, and I'm starting to run out of my sheep and berries on this side, so starting to think of other resources is a very good idea. Let's go out here and take the deer. However, we're Chinese. We're not allowed to take deer in the middle of the map. So what we need to do is make a tower and actually constantly defend this. This is against the AI, so I don't expect heavy pressure to come in. 
However, we need to be mindful of that. We can go ahead and make some Juganu now, just to kind of showcase how that looks like, because they're actually a very strong unit in the Song Dynasty, if you can make them. Um, but we can also stay flexible. Again, th this guide, I cannot predict everything that's going to happen in your games, but there's a few options. Like, if you need to make a stable now, you can go ahead and make a stable. Um, don't get any more eco upgrades, that's for sure, because you're just too greedy if you do. And I will go for the deer. If you want to get emplacements on your towers, like hand cannon slits, just mine more stone. You already have the mining camp there. So that's a really good defensive option there that's, I think, highly underrated amongst many players. That's a really good option. All right, at this point, the next step is castleage. So the way to do that is simply to make farms and set up your economy for the next age. Don't make too many farms, though, because it's a bit of a wood sink that's... Um, quite hard to afford sometimes. So we want to make a slow and steady transition to farms. We have a ton of villages right now. So the important thing is just to keep the economy flowing as quickly as possible. We also want to make villages uh, villages in key areas. So right, now, right here, you can make a village and that's going to help defend your deer because if they attack, you can just garrison into that village. Okay, now we're getting attacked by our opponent and it's just a few spearmen, but that's where the defensive units come into play. Notice I've not once actually looked to attack my opponent, not once. Uh, this would be the same in a real game as it's true against the AI. You don't need to attack your opponent if you're playing as the Chinese. It's like almost irrelevant. Let them do whatever they want, we'll defend. If they push you in feudal, we'll defend in feudal. If they push you in castle, we'll defend with our clock tower uh, siege weapons. Chinese is like the ultimate adaptation of um, in the early game. Alright, continue to transition here into the farm slowly and surely. And as these guys go idle, we're going to go ahead and use them. Uh, use the berries, there we go. As you see, you don't need much more than three bills on gold because that plus one officer should be good enough to get you up to the next age in terms of gold. We just need the food now. Continue to make farms slowly here. And again, don't look at the time too much here. If you need to stay long in Feudal Age to defend yourself, stay long in Feudal Age, it doesn't matter. Use your scout to constantly scout your opponent as well to make sure you know what they're attacking you with and continue adapting. I've got the archers, of course. A couple good buildings. A couple of good buildings are blacksmiths to pick up because you're going to need a blacksmith throughout the game anyways and a market. If you're floating wood, just pick up a market. It's 100 wood and it saves you a lot of hassle later on anyways. And notice we got the villages that give 40 housing rooms. So you really want to abuse those villages as much as possible. Okay. Just looking to work my way up to the castle age. And again, 300 gold is kind of the magic number with that one officer, and you should be good. We'll get the next two officers as we're on the way up to the castle age. I'm gonna just defend my opponent's scouts. And again, whatever they throw at you, just defend. You got towers. You can do whatever you want. And as you go up, you're gonna go ahead and go for the clockwork or astronomical clock tower. That's what they call it. And really build that as fast as possible. And the reason why I'm stressing as fast as possible is they're probably gonna attack you at this point. If they're not attacking you, then they're making a big mistake because you have an amazing economy right now. So they're probably gonna attack you. So that at this point, you go with the clock tower, spam it with as fast as, fast as possible. We just wanna get to the next age. And at this point, you just make two more officers to get that four officer set up. And you can ins inspire different buildings. Like right now, the mill isn't being used. So let's go inspire this lumber camp, which is gonna be used a lot more um, by more villagers. Once you get to the next age, this is gonna be the end of the builder. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it here real quick at 12 minutes in. But there's a few options you can go for. You can go for Siege, like Spring Gold, the Nest of Beasts from the Clock Tower. Depending on what you need, you can, uh, you can go Stables to go for Knights if that's what you want. You can go for Archers, you can go for Men at Arms. Really, you're super flexible. Juganu isn't always an option. You can work, um, you can work towards Fire Lancers, but you need to get the Imperial... Um, what's, the, what's the building called? The Imperial Academy, I believe it's called, or something like that. In the Castle Age as well. Uh, to get to the Yuan, uh, Yuan Dynasty, to go for Fire Lancers. That's a bit more of a late game thing. And feel free to mine more stone to get a third TC if you want to. You can get emplacements on your towers, you can get keeps, all that good stuff that you can uh, that you can go for with the Chinese from this position. So make sure you go up to that four officer setup in Castle Age, have like three of them on tax or two of them on tax and two of them inspiring buildings. You can inspire your military production buildings like your clock tower or your archery range to produce units faster and adapt. Another good option is also the palace guards with Chinese. So if you want to go for palace guards, for example, you just go like, if you have your archers to defend, you just go like three barrack transition, which you already have from beforehand if, if that's what you need. You can use your market if that's what you need as well. Cool. And that's why I like the market. You can just adapt so easily and you can make some siege and palace guards and you can get the upgrades from the blacksmith to, to allow you to do this pretty easily. So that's going to be it as just a little example that you can transition quite easily with the Chinese into the mid game. 
That's going to be it with them. Song Dynasty 2TC Boom. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll have another sip in the next video for these guys. Peace.